So after they talk about killing this, this wayward son, then they talk about the next mitzvah. The next mitzvah is uh, someone that was killed with a uh, you know, stoning um, must be buried the same day. Uh, and it says here, So it says, If a man shall have committed a sin whose judgment is death, he shall be put to death, and you shall hang him on a gallows. His body shall not remain for the night on the gallows, rather you shall surely bury him on that day. So the words, you shall surely bury him, is not a perfect uh, translation, not a perfect, it's not a good translation actually to the Hebrew, um, uh, or at least the full meaning of what it says in Hebrew. In Hebrew it says, as far as the, you shall surely bury him, it uh, repeats the word bury. Ki kavo tikberenu. So, so you will bury, bury him. In essence, it says bury twice. So the Gemara, Masechet Avodah, page 62b, says, why does it say that uh, bury twice? Because Hashem is teaching us here, one of the laws is that when you bury someone in Judaism, you have to bury everything that was used at the same time. So for example, if someone is hung, you have to bury the pole too. Take him off the pole, after you hang him, you have to bury the pole. If someone was killed by the sword, you have to bury the sword also. You can't keep the sword, kill another person with it or something like that. You have to bury the sword. Why am I mentioning this to you? How is this going to help you in your life? This is actually maybe probably not going to help any of you in your life, but it's going to help maybe somebody that's watching this. For the last 2,000 years, For the last 2,000 years, the Jews have been blamed for killing J.C. Penney. It says so in the the, uh, New Testament. And Baruch Hashem, Hashem keeps giving me chidushim against the New Testament that I think, uh, I don't think have been covered most of them, or at least some of them. So I got a chidush from the Gemara and his parasha. Something amazing. For 2,000 years, the Jews are blamed for killing this guy. It's written, it's written. Even though already for the last four or five, gener- uh, four or five decades, four, f- 40, 50 years, the uh, Catholic Church says, no, 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 it's not the Jews, it's the Romans. In the text, it says the Jews. Which means that anyone that says it's not the Jews is saying that we can just change the text. We can just change the New Testament. Which is proving the fact that it's fake. That it's man-made. If you could change it, then it means it's not divine. Right? But here, I'm not here to say that the, the New Testament is divine. Chas v'shalom, it's nonsense. But here I'm showing from this word, from this palacha, from this mitzvah, from these two words, proof that the New Testament is fake. Another proof. How? Since the halacha, Alakha from Shamaim, something we must follow. And according to the, you know, it, it's that we have to bury the tools that were used to kill someone as a death penalty. And according to the New Testament, the people that killed J.C. Penney were Jews, religious Jews. There was no such thing as non religious Jews back then. That means they would have had to follow this Alakha. If they hung him on his cross, they would have had to bury the cross too. Not just him. The cross also. Where in the book does it say they buried the cross? No, the cross is... The cross... How about this? In the book, it doesn't even say what happened to him. For three days, no one knows. For three days, after he got killed, for three days, no one actually knows for sure what happened. His guesses. I actually looked on the internet for hours and hours, looking, does anyone know what happened to this guy after he died? No one knows. Everyone has theories. 
actually, as a matter of fact, it's the craziest thing in the world. Craziest thing in the world. Their own sages, the Christian sages, Christian sages, some of them say, like some of their top sages, like we have Rabbi Akiva, the Avdin, their sages of Tum'ah, their sages say, some of them say, he went to Gainom. He went to hell. Their own people. people say it. It's actually written in the verses. They say in the verses, he went to hell. Their own verses say it, not me. I see. He's in, he, Gemara says he went to hell. And he stayed there. They just said he got out. The point is here, here's a verse that proves that the whole New Testament is nonsense. If you believe in this cross, and this cross is a symbol on every Christian and Catholic's neck. They all wear it. They tattoo it. They like it. They pray to it. They worship it. It's great. And all this thing. Great. Where would you get it from? It was supposed to be buried. Where would you get it from? It's supposed to be buried. Jews killed him? You say Jews killed him. Okay, they killed him. Fine, they killed him. How come you see the cross? Where's the cross? It was supposed to be buried. So either... Either way they lose. Either way you lose. Emet, kol azmatik natseach. The truth will always win. Eventually it will always win. Always win. Always win. Right here, from mitzvah. Parashat Shavua. Parashat Shavua. Shtabach Shemolad. So this is something I think is extraordinary because miskeni, many people are wasting their life, their fortunes, their, their neshama, their opportunity, their olam haba, following the stupidity and going to this idol worship they call the New Testament, following some guy, thinking they can do whatever they want in order to, you know, because some guy died for them. As a guy, as a died, as a nalaim, as shumnavan, this is all nonsense. There's only one God, the God of Israel. There's only one Torah. There's no other books. There's no New Testament. There's no Second Testament. There's no Testament Testament. There's nothing. There's Torah. That's it. And the reason why we need to advertise this as much as possible is not just because it would only be fair to fulfill the mitzvah of being a light to the nations and helping the goyim that are righteous. Some goyim are a shine. You can't help them even if you wanted to. You can't. But some of them are really nice, kind, beautiful people. You show the guy one verse. Look, it says here, New Testament is nonsense. It says Deuteronomy here. It says here, show them five proofs, that's it. They want to convert. Two seconds. You show them the proofs, that's it. They want to convert. They want to become Noahides. They want everything. They kisu mitzvot easy for them. They don't even have a yetzerah for mitzvot. They don't even have a yetzerah for mitzvot. You tell them, listen, you have to learn ten hours a day. That's it. You have to do brit milah. Can I do it now? <laughs> right now, right now. It's twelve o'clock at night. There's no nobody, no more. Can we find one? Can I also do kiru for free? Can I make videos for you? Can I... mitzvot and easy for them? Easy. Someone that really wants someone that wants the truth, no problem. For the half, whatever you want. Mitzvot, titi, talit. I'll sell my house. Why, I need to buy tefillin? Okay, no problem. I'll sell my house. I'll move. We'll get tefillin. Okay, you have to move to the Jewish neighborhood. Today? Okay, fine. I'll go. I'll pack my stuff. No, no, not today. Next week. Two weeks. Three weeks. Find yourself some place. No, no, but now Hashem will be happy if I move now, right? Yes, he would be happy if you move now, but you don't have to. You don't have to be so strict. Can we add more rules? They don't have a yetzerah for mitzvot. They want to do everything right away. So if they already want to do everything right away, tell them the truth. You're supposed to be light to the nations anyway. That's one. Second reason is that right now, just like there's so much kedusha in the world that's coming, it's being infiltrated into the world at the end of times. We don't have much time. Mashiach is around the corner. A lot of people, Baruch Hashem, are doing tshuva, starting doing they're in it people are doing tshuva something's happening around the world people are looking for the truth unfortunately just like this kedusha before the end of times is also tum'ah and that's why there is people that are this, the deepest end of tum'ah which is actually Jews partnering with Christians and creating a new movement, they call themselves a Messianic Jews. They call themselves Jews, but Messianic. Which in essence really means Christianity with a Jewish costume. 
It's like a rat with a, uh, you know, costume of a dog. Problem is, the naive, the ignorant, and the foolish fall for it. Not only because they have no idea what's going on. You show them a verse. Look, in Isaiah 53, it says a suffering servant. Oh, suffering. Wow, that sounds like that guy. Yes, you know what? I thought the same thing too. Okay, come to my church. Oh no, synagogue. <laughs> they don't know, miskinim. And I'm not talking about America. I'm talking about Israel. If it's happening in Israel, of course you know it's happening in America. It's happening a million times more in America. Happening in America, happening in Europe, it's happening everywhere. These missionaries have a new costume. They call themselves Messianic Jews. The Reshaim, Merushaim, the Genom will never end. They call themselves rabbis. They put a talit on. And they tell people, no, 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 you stay Jewish. You just believe in some guy. And the naive and the foolish fall for it, miskenim. So the first reason is because we're naive, we're ignorant, and we're foolish. What's the second reason? Money. Money. They spend over, these movements spend over $300 million a year just in Israel. Just in Israel to convert Jews. $300 million to you Americans doesn't sound like much. $300 million. The budget for NASA is $975 billion. What's $300 million? In Israel, $300 million is like $300 billion in America. $300 million in Israel? It's a significant percentage of the GDP of the country. I think it's maybe 15% of the GDP. Of the total economy. It's coming from these people trying to convert Jews. Do you understand the magnitude of this? They pay people to convert. Misken, the guy has financial problems. Okay, no problem. We'll buy you a new house. Convert. Now when they write the checks, they don't tell them it's, uh, it's uh, Judaism anymore. It's, uh, no, it's Christianity, but I'll, pay you, I'll buy you a house. You're already in. You're already in six months. You're already in. You already have the handcuffs. You already have the collectors at the door. And in Israel, it's not like collectors like it is in America where they send you a, uh, a bill in the mail for seven years before they do anything. In Israel, people come to your house, start taking stuff out. You owe money, they start taking your TV, they start taking your carpet, they start, they'll take your children if they have to. Is that wrong? Is it wrong? It's 100% wrong, but it is what it is. We live, in a, we live in a secular world and it's not allowed. Not allowed. That's actually this week's parasha also. You're not allowed to put somebody in a situation where the collateral for the debt is something they need for their livelihood. Not allowed. It's in this week's parasha. Point being is, when someone's vulnerable, when someone's weak, when someone's ignorant, you can take advantage of them. So we have to fight the Tum'ah with the Kedusha. We have to publicize these things. Each Jew must, and even a Gentile that loves Hashem and wants the truth, must equip themselves with weapons against this idol worship they call Christianity. Must equip themselves with weapons against this idol worship that they call Messianic Judaism. You must know your information because one day it's going to come to your door. It's going to come to your door. It's not, it's not, it's not a prophecy. Here. It's a reality. Why? That's, just, that's, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. Yetzirah has unlimited money. Unlimited money. He's going to come to you with a friend. A friend of yours is going to come. Look, look, there's Isaiah 53. Look, there's a, look what uh, this one says and that prophet says. Why don't you look at the five books of Moses? No, 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 that's too old. Let's look at something more recent. Let's look at the prophets. Why don't you look at the Alakha, Shabbat, Tefillin, Nida? Why don't you look at those things? No, 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 we just want to look at the few prophets that we could play with them because they're vague. And someone who doesn't know, like, oh, this is Hebrew, that's Hebrew, it all sounds the same to me. They're completely wrong about everything, but it doesn't matter. There's someone who doesn't know, nothing's wrong. If before you guys were coming to me for, for a while and you didn't know any Torah, and I told you, listen, you know what, by the way, Moshe Rabbeinu had wings. Moshe Rabbeinu had wings, he flew. Him and Aaron were flying over Paros, firing at him with shots. You know, that F 16 flying next to them, they were even faster. You, you would believe me, what would you know if you don't know anything? What would you know? You believe anything I said? 
I have a keeper, I have a beard, I fit the, I fit the role. I tell you that Moshe Rabbeinu flies, you believe it. I, no, no, it says it in the book of uh, this one. You know Bechlai, you're going to check that book. You understand? People don't know. People don't know. People are naive. They fall for, 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 for charlatans all the time. Especially when the charlatans are supposed to be the, authentic, the symbol of authenticity. When they have this Rasha Merusha, what is his name? It's, 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 it's Yitzhak Shapiro. Rasha Merusha, and if he doesn't do tshuva, the genom that he will have will never end. Never end. Gemara Masechet Rosh Hashanah, page 17, talks about him. Him, it talks about. It says the Mashiach will come. Hashem will end the Gehenom, but the seventh level of Gehenom will never end. The fire for those people that are in it will never end, even after the Mashiach comes and the world ends. Why? Because he's coming as an Israeli. As an Israeli he's coming, speaking to them in Hebrew, in Hebrew terms. Tell them, no, JC loves us, JC this and JC that. Now, a bunch of ignorant Jews and non-Jews see a Jew that's supposed to be the messenger of God. Tell them J.C. Penny is real. Kadosh, 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 they say. They say it's holy. They say it's holy. Whatever he says, it's holy. They already had some belief about him. They read about six pages in the New Testament and one and a half in the Old Testament. This guy says he read the whole thing. And he says he found him. And he speaks Hebrew. Wow. Might as well be Moses. He might as well he call himself JC. If he start call next week he starts calling himself JC, they believe him. I bet you anything. He starts calling himself JC. He's the JC, they'll believe him. You'll have thousands of people believing him. Why? Because that's what a charlatan does. The biggest lies in the world have an element of truth in them. That's why they're the biggest lies. The biggest lies in the world have to have some truth. There's no such thing as a big lie that's a complete lie. It must have some truth. The fact that he is, was born Jewish. The fact that he speaks some level of Hebrew, even though his Hebrew is horrendous. For anyone who knows Hebrew, his Hebrew is horrendous. He sounds like a retard. He does. And this is actually an insult to people that are mentally deficient. He, he, doesn't, he, he looks like there's something wrong with him. His father was a rabbi. Whatever, father, mother, it all comes from the root. Listen, we were learned from this parasha. Somewhere, somewhere along the line, somebody screwed up. That's why we have rotten apple over here, leading a bunch of Jews to leave Judaism and go to this. See this video. So here's the thing. We have to fight it. We have to fight it. We have to publicize the truth. We have to show people that there is no such thing other than the Torah. Torah is the only thing in the world that's pure. The only thing in the world that is divine. There is an endless amount of proofs from the Torah that Christianity is false. And if that's not enough, there's endless amount of proofs in the New Testament that the New Testament is false. Whichever one you want to use. One, we mentioned today. Two, we mentioned you know, passively today, which is the fact that they themselves say you could change a text. Because according to the text says one thing, and they say, no, 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 we don't agree with this anymore. If you don't agree with your own text, what's to say that the rest of the text is reliable then? So, point is, anyone that's really seeking the truth, just like it says in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, if you look for me, you will find me, if you look for me with all of your heart and all of your soul. Hashem says, if you're really looking for the truth, you're looking for me, me. You're not looking for some shortcut. You're looking for me, you'll find me. But you have to look for me with all of your heart and all of your soul. All of your heart and all of your soul. Meaning, there's no end to how much you're going to look and eventually you're going to find. There's no end. I've heard enough. New arrival screams echoing through the hallway to know that this ain't good. Once they pass them through the infierno, they don't come back. It's enough to make you go crazy. Do not think we fear you, spirit. We know your power is born of evil. This is your last night in the land of the living. You understand me, malevolent demon?
cure you seek. Go within. Just now, once you cross that threshold, there is only one way out. There was a rich family that lived here called the Hetheringtons, and unfortunately, their daughter passed away of a heart attack inside the house. Basically, they were so devastated that they reached out to people claiming to be psychic mediums. They actually weren't psychic mediums. They opened up a total of 11 portals inside this house and invited spirits and entities from all different kinds of dimensions. Well, I think there are certain pieces of evidence that there is an afterlife. Resurrection of the dead is affirmed uh, pretty clearly uh, in the Talmud and the Midrash. To be honest with you, to give this lecture is a nightmare. If it was up to me, I wouldn't. There's going to be some graphic details. This place is a maze. The person after death went to a place called Sheol. This is by far the largest near-death experience study that has ever been conducted. People go to a place and they experience weird things. And sometimes they actually will see a character of some type. Well, where did that come from? describe feeling profoundly peaceful, seeing a bright, warm, welcoming light. Some people describe watching doctors and nurses working on them with incredible accuracy. Next thing I knew, I was above my body watching the operation. How long did you feel like you were gone? I went to a place of timelessness. And so what that means, it could have been a second. It could have been five minutes. I don't know. Can you imagine waking up from your sleep and not being able to move? As I'm lying there, I realize that there's a, an evil presence next to me. Do you believe that angels, demons exist? Holy shit, get out of here! Oh my god, dude! Strange things keep happening. Bizarre nightmares, as if I'm on fire. Oh my Whoa, what the hell is this? Man, I've got a bad chest pain. Satan's Hollow is what it's called, the portal to hell. Some people calling it an eye of fire, while others said it looked like the portal to hell opening up. And the next thing I know, I was outside of my body, looking at my body. What I'm going to do is called claromancy, the art of throwing lots or throwing bones. 2,000 years of experience, passed down, recorded, of how demons work. God has them all on a leash, and he lets the leash go enough to let them tempt us, because that's what makes us spiritually stronger. I'm trying to be as graphic as possible so you understand what we're talking about. It's your ticket to reality. It's your ticket to freedom. It's your ticket to immortality. Is there an afterlife? Is there a it's God? It's the type of information that can keep you away from the itself. What happens to us after we die? Thank you.